of your Bibles, turn with me to the Psalms, book of Psalms, chapter 130. Psalms, chapter 130, and we'll start in verse 1. It's kind of strange, this message of, took about eight different curbs, so I don't really know uh, what we're going to get, but I know it's going to be God's Word, amen? In Psalms 130 and verse 1, the psalmist said, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice, and let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is, lo there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I will wait for the Lord. I, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Father, God, I, I come to you, Lord, as a vessel empty. I pray, Lord, that you would fill me with your spirit. And God, give me the words to be able to speak that will be helpful to each of us individually and collectively. God, I pray, Lord, that you would guide this church and bless this church in the word. And God, that you would guide us in the path of righteousness personally for each one of us for thy name's sake. God, may we represent you in everything that we say and do in the proper way. Lord, may we bring glory and not reproach to your name. For those that's unable to be in attendance this morning, Lord, there's several out, I pray. For them, I pray for each one. Some are sick in their bodies. I pray for healing. Some, Lord, are traveling. I pray for traveling mercies. Some, Lord, are just uh, AWOL on you, uh, doing their own thing. And I pray, God, that you draw them back to yourself. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name. And amen and amen. You can be seated. The psalmist was saying, as he, he prayed this prayer, he said, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. You know, when you can get to a position that you cry out to God, that's when you really want to do business with God. A lot of times people have stuff we try to put off as prayer and we try to offer up as prayer and like uh, we get a jingle going and play the same jingle for the Lord time and time and time again and Basically, we're thus praying with ourself. But the psalmist here said, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. And he said, Lord, hear my voice, and let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. The psalmist knew that if God was attentive and that God would take respect and hear his petitions that he was going to offer up that he could have the desires of his heart because God has invited us to come into the throne of grace boldly. God is the one that extended and said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy, uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the psalmist here had said that he cried unto the Lord out of his... He said, Lord, hear my voice, and out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. He said, if thou, Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? The fact of it is that every one of us that are here and those watching by the way of the webcam, if you've been born again, I know positionally that you've been accounted righteous by the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? But I know also that each one under the sound of my voice has also had to deal with the issue of sin. That's why the psalmist had said here, I mean, it would be great if when you get born again, you lose your atomic nature, your sinful nature. But that's just not the way it is. Your sinful nature is still there. It's still uh, haunting you, and it's there. Uh, the psalmist said, Lord, he said, uh, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? Amen. Because of pride, some would not dare take a drink of anything because of 
uh, how it would make them look and what place it would put them in. And because of pride, some would never steal anything in case they get caught. Uh, it would bring such shame to their family name. And uh, because of some of these other sins, people wouldn't do certain sins. But every one of us have to deal with the issue of sin. Amen. And you will to... That's why the Apostle Paul said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? But he didn't stop there. Praise God. He said he went on and he said he thanked the Lord Jesus Christ, which giveth us victory, amen, through the atonement that he made at Calvary. Jesus Christ has given us victory. You see, you're going to meet God one day. And you say, I don't believe in God. Well, you're still going to meet Him one day. You'll believe it the second you see Him. And should you end up in hell before you see Him, and, and the fact of it is, God has judged sin already on Calvary. He judged everybody guilty. Amen. I'm guilty. You're guilty. The whole world become guilty before God. And on Calvary, Jesus Christ judged sin. The wages of sin is death. Jesus Christ tasted death once and for all for every man. Yeah. Amen. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you don't have to believe it, but it's the truth. Amen. You don't have to believe it's daylight outside, but whether you believe it or not, it's daylight outside this morning when this message is being preached. Amen. Just because someone says they don't believe something doesn't alter the truth of it, and it doesn't change it. Amen. Uh, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He changes not. Amen. But the psalmist said this, that He cried unto God out of the depths, and it wasn't just a nonchalant type thing. He was pouring his soul out to God. And friend, when you get to do business with God about heaven and hell and about uh, life and death, you're going to be sober-minded about it and it won't be a, a light thing off the cuff that you bring before God. You see, there's only one way to heaven and there's only one name given among men whereby you must be saved. The psalmist said this, he said, he said, If thou, Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou shouldest be feared. You better fear the Lord. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's why the psalmist said, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait. And in His word do I hope. Where's your hope put in? Some people put their hopes in denominations. Some people put their hopes in their good works. Some people put their hopes on their lifestyle. They say, well, now I always treat people good and I keep the golden rule and I try to be a good uh, helper and a good neighbor and them's all good things to do. The fact of it is it won't change where you spend eternity. Some say, well, I like to go to church because if I go to church, that makes me a Christian person. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian anymore than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Amen. Amen. You can eat at both places. You can consume some nutrition at both places. Amen. But you, one thing makes you a Christian. And it's not being a Baptist or a Methodist. It's not quitting a bunch of stuff. It's by coming to a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to what, listen to what the, the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse, verse number 5 down. He said, Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not to be robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Amen. Listen, this right here, what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ is going to determine where you spend eternity. What you do with the Lord is going to determine on which direction you go. And not only that, it's going to determine on what kind of person you're going to be. Amen. If you're going to walk around in death or walk around in life. Amen. There's none other name. There's only one name. Amen. That'll make a difference. And it's not Muhammad and it's not uh, Buddha and it's not Harry Krishna. Amen. It's not Allah. They try to say, well, there's only one God. And they try to compile. Listen, there's one God, Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ. All the rest of them are wannabes and man-made prop-ups and look-alikes, amen. But the thing of it is, they don't, none of them look alike. Every one of them are doctrines of devils. The only one that ever gave his son was the Lord God, Jehovah God, amen. He is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And he become flesh. His right arm brought, uh, brought salvation. And he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Him. What you do with Jesus. Now, let me tell you what a lot of people do with Jesus. They say, yeah, preacher, I believe that. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord. I believe that He's God manifested in the flesh. I believe that. You had not believed nothing different than a devil has believed. Yeah. Thou sayest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils believe and they fear and tremble. Yeah. But we know there's no saved devils. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. It's when you receive Him. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ and in His name. The Bible tells us, and I've quoted it twice, but in the book of Acts chapter number 4, Acts chapter number 4 and verse number 12, the Bible said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you make heaven your home, you must be saved to get there. You must be born again. And if there's not a time in your life, listen to me, and you know it. Everybody sitting under the sound of my voice, you know if you're born again or not. Amen. Right. Amen. You know if, they've been, if you've been saved. I mean, you know it. If you don't know it, you hadn't been. Just let me say it that way. Can a man be blind and receive sight and not know it? Why no, man? A man ain't never seen nothing before in his life and his eyes become healed and he begins to have vision. He's going to know that right off. And per listen, friend, when you pass from death unto life, you're going to know it. I mean, it's going to be a change in your life and, it's, and others around you are going to know it. Now, you can get all kinds of ways since that time, but there has to be a time that you pass from death unto life. And you know whether you did. I know where I was at when I got saved. I went to the altar many times. I went to the altar for salvation. I can't tell you how many times, but there was one place where I got saved and there was something happened that day. Amen. And it transformed my life. From that time on, I had a hunger for spiritual things. I haven't been sinlessly perfected since that time, nor am I yet now. But one day I will be, amen. One day I'll be rid of the body of this death. But until then, I'll press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of my faith, walking by faith, standing by faith, and it was much power of the Spirit of God that lies in me. I will live for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. Amen. But there had a come a time that I was trans transformed into the child of God that I am. Now I've grown since then. There's some things I don't have battles with that I used to have battles with. There's some, some things that I started to have battles with that I didn't even know was worth battling over until after I grew some in the Lord. Amen. But the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other name. Amen. It's not in the name of the Baptist church. It's not the name of the pastor. It's not believing eschatology right. It's not because you've got all your uh, prophetic doctrine nailed down. Friend, that has nothing to do with whether you go to heaven or hell. What has to do with whether you go to heaven or hell is what you do with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He's either your Savior, your Lord, or He's just some other religious figure that you know about. Who is Jesus Christ to you? There's only one name. And it's the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Listen, there's salvation in that name. He said in Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other. He didn't say in many other. He said in any other. There is no salvation in Jehovah Witness. There's no salvation in Mormonism. There's no salvation. You say, well, these are good people. I didn't say they were bad people. I just said they're not saved. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And it's not the brother of Satan. It's the Lord God Almighty. Amen. 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 He's not a little God that's been created from the figments of, of the imagination. No. He's a God that said, I will go down and redeem. And the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary and the Holy Ghost, which is God the Spirit, overshadowed her. And He put Himself within her, grew a body, and took up His abode in that body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He was God manifested in the flesh, the Bible said. And when I read here in, in, in the, uh, the text that I originally was going to start out with here in Philippians, he said this, he said, God hath highly, also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Listen to what God said in Psalms 138. In Psalms 138, I think I marked that scripture here. In Psalms 138 and verse, the psalmist said this, he said, I will praise thee with my whole heart. But verse 1 and 2, he said, before the gods will I sing, unto, sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You know why the psalmist said, I'm going to hope in your word? Because God said, I honor my word above my name. And he said his glory he would not share with another. Amen. Now that's pretty, pretty lot of weight put on his word. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. You can trust it. You can, you can hope in it. You can rest on the Word of God. You might not be able to take a lot of preachers' Word very far, but you can take God's Word all the way. Amen. You can take God's Word. God said He'd honor it above all of His name, His Word. That's why the psalmist said here in Psalms 130 that he hoped. Listen to what he said. He said, he said, but thou, but there is forgiveness, verse 4, Psalms 130. There is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. I hope in the word of God. And it's not a maybe so hope, but it's a sure hope and a firm foundation. God said it, and that's all that matters. When God said it, I'm just waiting for it to come to pass, because it will. God said, when this comes to pass, and it will, Amen. just like He said, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Now, it won't do them any good when they confess it in that day. They're just going to confess it. Even Satan is going to bow the knee and say, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Right before He gets cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, there's forgiveness in His name. The Bible tells us in 1 John, if you'd like to turn there, 1 John 2 and verse number 12, He said this, He said, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. God didn't forgive me because I was a good person. He forgave me because He loved me. The Bible said that God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and 8. Amen. God said His love on us. He tells us in 1 John 1 and 9 that He said this. He said, verse 8, He said, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. I want you to know in the name of Jesus Christ, there's strength and healing in his name.
And the Bible so tells us too. He says, is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. He said, and pray the prayer of faith and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. A lot of people say, oh, I'm afraid that sounds like a, another denomination and they'll, they'll put a tag on me. I don't care what tag you tag me with. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in the healing virtue of the blood of the Lamb. I believe that He's God manifested in flesh and there's nothing too hard for Him. And I don't care what group you connect me with. I'm a Christian. I'm washed in the blood. I pastor a Baptist church. Amen. But I believe the Bible. Amen. And that's what I'm going to stand with. Amen. Some people are afraid to say Holy Ghost because somebody will tag them with somebody else. <laughs> I remember Brother Ed Ballou said that uh, he had a pair of wire rimmed glasses and people said it looked hippie and that he needed, and they wouldn't let him preach at their church because he had wire rimmed glasses. And that's something. He said, I hope them hippies don't start eating cornbread and buttermilk. He said, I have to quit that too. <laughs> I understand you ought to have a separation, but your separation ought to be to the Lord. Amen. If it's not to the Lord, as we were praying this morning for Sunday school and, and praying for the church service, listen, unless God's in your uh, Sunday school, unless God's in your preaching, unless God's in your worship, it's all in vain. Amen. Unless the Spirit of God is there. He tells us in the book of Acts 3 and 16 these words. He said, And in His name, through faith in His name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, and faith which is by Him hath given Him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. This is the man that was sitting at the temple when Peter and John went in. And he looked upon Peter and, and he was saying, alms, alms, alms. And Peter said, silver and gold have I not. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, rise up and walk. Amen. Amen. I'm not a healer, but God is. Amen. Amen. I, there's been people that's been healed of cancer, that's been healed of everything in the world, man. There's confidence in, in His name. You can have confidence when He says it in His name. Amen. In His Word. The Bible tells us in 1 John 5 and 13 these words. He said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. You can have confidence about it. I've talked to some Christians and blessed their heart. They say, I hope I make it in preacher." I'm not trusting in my performance. Though I try to live right. I'm not trusting in my church's prayers for me. I'm not trusting in anybody other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He made it possible. In Him is peace and life and happiness. He is the way, John 14 and 6, the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. He is the way, not a way. He tells us here, he said, in 1 John 5 and 12, uh, 13, he said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. It's something you can know. Amen. Do you know it? Amen. You know you're going to heaven. I know I'm going. Amen. They say, oh, he's real sure of himself. I'm real sure of God. Amen. I'm real sure what happened in my life. I hadn't got over it yet. Amen. 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 It affected me then and it's still affecting me now. Amen. There's been some things I got into a fad and got out of. There's been things in my life that I embarked into and then embarked out to. But this is something I've, it's been with me from day one. Yes. Since the time I got saved, His presence is right there. Yes. Amen? I mean, that's what I say. If you've been saved, you know what you have. If you have to say, well, I hope I have. I don't know if I have or not. You probably hadn't. And that means you're in jeopardy of hell. And that means, listen, though you be a good person and though you might be better than some people that's going to heaven as far as people go, I've met some pretty hard-to-love people that's trusted in the blood. Amen? 
Listen, before God is still knocking junk out of my life, it's hard for people to love you. Amen. When you got so much of the flesh hanging in your life, God just keeps cutting away and cutting away and cutting away and conforming me. One day, I'm, he's going to look down from heaven. He's going to see his son. And he's going to say, ready to come. Amen. Amen. Do you know you're saved? I mean, you know it. Amen. You know, there's some people that they can be talked out of their salvation like that. Amen. You can go to them and say, well, I've, I mean, I've seen people, they don't really know. They hope so. They think they're on a, on a rail, balancing. I think I'm saved. If I don't fall, I'm saved. If I don't, if I don't stumble, I'm saved. Man, what Jesus did to me was born me into His family, adopt me into the household of faith, sealed me with the Holy Ghost of God, did an operation of faith in my life with a circumcision not made with hands and cut me loose from this body of death. Amen. And if you're saved, that's what He did to you. Now, I didn't know what that was when I got saved, Pee Wee. I didn't know, brother. I knew something sure enough happened. But I didn't understand all the things that God had done for me. I'm just still finding out some of them. There's sonship through His name in Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. He said, As many as received Him to them, gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on His name. Have you trusted? Have you believed? Have you rested? He said, which were born... And it's not my terminology, it's not my catchphrase, it's not, it's not something I come up with. Jesus came up with it when He was talking to a religious man that was a good man as far as men go. He didn't smoke, drink, drink or chew or hang with them that do. He went, to, he went to the synagogue every time the thing opened. He was a teacher of it. And yet Jesus said, except a man be born again... He cannot see the kingdom of God. Told a, a, a preacher, a priest, he said, you got to be saved if you're going to make it in. Well, oh, I'm a preacher. I don't care what you are, buddy. You better be saved or you're going to end up in hell. Amen? Well, my daddy built the church. My daddy, my daddy has got a monument. It don't matter. My mama was the first woman's ka koalas. It don't matter what your mama was, your sister or your brother. This is one thing that between you and God. Amen. Amen. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I think it's in verse uh, 5. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For well, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. One mediator, and it's not my girl. One mediator, and it's not the Baptist church. One mediator, and it's not your works. One mediator, and it's not your mama. One mediator, and it's not the Pope. One mediator, and it's none of these religions. There's one mediator between man and God, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only mediator. The only one. There's sonship in His name and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ there's answers to prayer. John chapter 14 and verse 13 and 14 Jesus said this. He said, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He's talking to His disciples. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. It's in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Let me tell you something. Why don't you ask certain things in His name? Some people are suffering things. They're being beat up spiritually they're suffering physically and, and they don't pray for healing and they won't pray for nothing they just won't ask in his name could it be that you don't believe that God's going to do what he said he would do 
Well, I tried that one time preacher and it didn't work. I've tried a lot of things before that didn't work, but I just usually would check and find out it's usually with me. It's where it didn't work. Because God said if you don't believe it, it ain't going to work. I was working at an apartment complex and I found a whole little container of mustard seed. It must be, those things are tiny. Yeah. And the Lord said, if you had faith as the size of a grain of mustard seed, it's a grain. He said, you shall be able to say unto this man, we have very little faith. All the devil's got to say, but you can't do that. That stopped prayer for many people. Well, I don't want to ask nothing for me, preacher. I, I, I don't want to ask for myself. Honey, if you believe prayer works, you will pray for you. Amen. Amen. You asked other things for yourself, don't you? I bet you asked the people stuff for yourself. Amen. Things you want, don't you ask somebody wherever the getting place is, you ask. Amen. We just don't believe God will do what He said He would do. Listen, I've come to the Lord before and I said, God, I feel like that man that prayed for his son that had the demon and that had cast him into the fire and you told him all things are possible to those that believe. And he said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I say, Lord, I feel like that man. Amen. And I don't want to feel like that man, but it's in there. But God, please take that out of me. And as much as I know how to ask right, and Lord, as much as I know how to believe right, I'm believing and asking right as I can. God, if there's something hindering my prayer, Lord, show me. And I pray like that sometimes. I just I try to lay it out before God. So I want to make sure that I'm in fellowship with my God. Amen. It's okay. He knows where you're at. I found out that me and him have some good fellowship like Amen. that. Amen. I just come to him and say, Lord, I did this. I don't know why I did this, but I did this, and, and, and I know why I did it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> help, Lord. He'll help you. He's a very present help. Would you think, listen, would you want somebody to come to you like that or come to you and say, most kind, dear friend, I come to you and, and give you a spill that's not them and that you know is a made-up jingle and something they don't mean from their heart? Or would you rather come somebody to come say, look, and just come clean? Yeah. Yeah. This is where I am. This is what I did. Help me. God, please help me. A broken and contrite spirit, he said, that will receive. Amen. He will. In the name of our Lord Jesus, there's answered prayers. Sometimes the answer's no, but he'll answer. Sometimes the answer's not yet, just be patient. Sometimes the answer is helps on the way. Just be, amen, be still, know that I'm God. But you'll get sufficed with it. Then we have guidance through His name. The psalmist, I, I like reading the psalms. There's every situation that you could enter in in the life. In Psalms 23, the psalmist said this. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd guides the flock. Amen. Amen. He guides them. He watches for the flock. He protects the flock. He won't lead it to some poison grass. He'll feed what he'll get there is some good green grass for the flock to eat. And see, God guides us and, and he protects us. And the, the, the psalmist was a shepherd boy, his own self, and he knew what it was, the job of the shepherd. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and He leadeth me beside the still waters and He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk, though I walk. He said, I might walk through some valleys and though I do, He said, I shall not. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not. I will fear no evil, 
for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And he said, surely goodness and mercy. They said, that's a couple of uh, angels. <laughs> I just know it's God's goodness and mercy. Amen. Shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, there's only one name. And you're either true to that name or you're not true to that name. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, Jesus was writing to a church and He said, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. Amen. I love the Lord because He first loved me. Now I know that's not, you want to say, well, I just love God. But it's because He loved me is because I love Him. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I didn't... I didn't want God. I wasn't looking for God. I was afraid of God. Amen. Yeah. And I figured God hated me. That's, you know, I'd been told that I was no good. I didn't think God would love me. But I'll tell you what, as, as soon as He drew me, I come to Him. And I found out He received me. Amen. But He didn't leave me like He found me. He changed me. And He's still changing me. He's still changing me. I want to ask you to bow your heads just for a moment. Let me ask you a question. These people been in church their whole life, been raised in church, but never got the sin issue dealt with. Been in church, know the right way. These people that know how to get to Florida that's never been. They say, oh yeah, you get on 40 and you just head south. <coughs> just because you know something don't mean you've been there. That's right. yeah. yeah, Jesus is the only way. Have you ever taken the way? Have you received Him? While no one's looking around, I want to ask you, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, why don't you come, just get out of your seat, meet me at the altar in an act of, of obedience and faith and say, Lord, I'm coming to you now. Come to Jesus. We'll bow down and pray and you can know that you know that you know that your name is in the book of life. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know I've been saved. There's no doubt about that. But I'm out of fellowship with God. Will you pray for me? Anybody? Please pray for me. I'm just telling you, I know I'm saved, but pray for me. I need prayer. Nothing shameful about needing prayer, friend. Prayer changes things. You want change? You want help? You want help? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Do you want the help of God? You want God's intervention in your life? You want God to help you? Buddy, I do. I got both my hands up for this prayer. Amen. How in the world can you make it without Him? You can't. Father, I come to You in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I delivered that which You put on my heart this morning and even before we got up, Lord, I gave it just like You gave it to me. Lord, I'm free from any man's blood that would be here. I'm free, Lord, that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I am free from that, Lord. I've given the gospel and I've given it in a way, Lord, that nobody has to leave out of here without knowing and Father, there's some that raised their hand and asked for help. You know what need it is. could be a physical need. It could be a spiritual need or emotional need, a financial need. I don't know. But I know you know all things, Lord. And I pray for these. I pray, God, that you would move. And when you do, that it would, it would come to them and they would lift up their eyes into the hills and thank you. And they would praise your holy name for your goodness and mercy. Father, I thank you right now for hearing us and answering prayer. Forgive me, Lord, where we come short. 
Help me to be built up in holy faith, strengthened by the power of your might. And Lord, I give you praise. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I appreciate your attention this morning to the Word of God. Um, take us out of here. Tell somebody about what the Lord has done. Yes. She said she felt better and she felt like church, but she didn't make it. And, um, anyway, pray for her. She, she's done better, but she didn't sound really great. Amen. Her lungs are just really congested. Amen. Pray for Linda and for her husband. Pray for... colon cancer and the insurance he had didn't cover all the all the chemo that he needed to have. They said he so many and then just quit. So I don't know if that was enough or... They said he needed more, but... He didn't have to do that way, but... They do. They do. Remember these folks, if you will. Amen. Pray for those that are not here. Amen. Pray for Rudy. Pray for Jeff. He's in Bristol. Uh, pray for his sister. She's been real sick. Um, and somebody else is... Uh, She was, but she's back out. Yeah, she got back out. Amen. Y'all at Liberty, pray for these. That? I, knock, I knocked its block off, didn't I? God bless you. You got it.